Hi, I'm Robert Danzig. I'm here at the Cool Tool Studio in Wisconsin, and today what I'm going to be showing is kind of an introduction to riveting and lots of applications of rivets to put your jewelry together. So what I'm going to be showing you today is riveting and lots of different applications of riveting. Riveting happens to be one of the strongest ways of putting anything together. Uh, it's much stronger in a lot of ways than any other joint you can make in jewelry making or any other kind of assemblage. If you think about it, airplanes are not welded together or soldered, certainly. They are riveted together. Uh, your cars, everything you have are, uh, are riveted together. Uh, it's just all over the place. I also like to make the uh, observation that if you think about it, a button on your shirt or wherever is actually a rivet. A rivet has two heads and a shaft in between. And if you think about a button, that's kind of what it is. Uh, it's nothing but kind of an odd rivet. Uh, for jewelry making, I have a bunch of examples here on the table that I'm going to show you. And um, this first one here, this is actually held together with one rivet. This sterling silver piece with the reflector in it is attached just with one rivet right there. And that's actually holding it together. Then on the bottom here, these are all rivets. Uh, the head of the rivet here is just balled up sterling silver. And then it is just hammered over on the back. These rivets are really doing virtually no holding whatsoever. They are just for decoration. And I'm pretty fond of using them that way. Uh, so you don't have to be holding things together to employ a rivet. Uh, I have another example of that right here. On this polymer clay, right here, there's virtually nothing being held by those rivets. But it's a nice little accent that I have here on the, uh, this uh, polymer clay. It certainly doesn't go through or anything like that onto the back but it shows up as a rivet and the rivets have a certain reference and I'm really fond of that reference. So it, it appears that this little piece here is being held to this background by those rivets, but it's, the polymer clay is actually just one piece. Uh, and speaking of polymer clay, these wings here, this is metal, but this is polymer clay and these wings are held into this, polymer, uh, into this metal piece by a rivet. So I inserted the polymer clay in there after I had finished them and just one rivet that goes all the way through. And so it goes through here, about a half an inch through the polymer clay and out the back. This is an old uh, a, a celluloid handle from an old knife from about the 1920s. And I wanted to have that attached. And I could have used lots of other ways of doing it, but it certainly would have to be done cold or without any heat. So I just riveted it right through. And because of the, you know, the uh, sides coming up on either side of it, one rivet will do because it, it won't really be able to rock back and forth. Uh, this little uh, red cross button is actually held in with another rivet, another balled up head on here, and it just goes right through the back of the bezel and is riveted from the back. This is metal clay. So you can rivet virtually any material. Rivets don't care what they go through or how many layers. So here I have metal clay, a broken bicycle reflector, and sterling silver, and the rivets go through. You can just barely see them. They're um, around here and here and up in here. And then they go all the way through all of those layers and come out back here. The next one here is, again, uh, my favorite material is a reflector, and this is sterling silver. I have fold formed this. Fold forming is another video that they have here at, at Cool Tools. I fold formed the ster uh, sterling cutout, and then I riveted this right through the material here, the reflector, and through this copper, and they come out on the back. The bail here is actually riveted in place as well. And the nice thing about this bail is that the bail, because of the way I made the rivet, can actually move back and forth. So it has a little movement when you're wearing it. I have another one here where uh, the heads of this, and I'm going to get into this in a little bit, these are all rivets. So this piece of polymer clay right here is held to this um, enclosure of copper by these rivets. And what I did, instead of having them round heads, I actually squared off the head of the rivet. Rivets don't have to be round. They, you can make the heads any shape that you'd like. And that's what I did. So it, the square rivet kind of goes with the square motif of the polymer clay here. Uh, on this piece, uh, I really didn't have any way of attaching this antique ruler to the background of this. This is faux bone, copper, and sterling silver. 
So what I did is I just real, drilled very, very small. These are very, very thin rivets because I didn't want a big head. So what I did is I just used wire and I'm going to be demonstrating how to just use any length of wire to make a rivet. And I have them going here through the metal, the ivory, the, the copper, the faux bone and the sterling silver and they come out on the back. Uh, this copper is held into place in place by the same rivets. There are several rivets here. This is metal clay again, same thing. And they all come out on the back here. And I attach some other things to this sterling silver backing with rivets as well. So none of these things could have been um, soldered. So I had to use some sort of mechanical attachment. Rivets too, again, and these are nothing but decoration. So what I'm gonna do is just talk briefly about the heads. I mentioned on this piece about making them square. These are rivets that look, start out just like this. They handled them here at Cool Tools and it has a nice flat round head. So what I've done here is just with a file, I would hold it in a pair of pliers and just use a file to start changing the shape. I also use little stamps to make little decoration on here. This is nothing but a, a, a nail set to make a little dent in the middle of the rivet. This is filing them. This is using a chisel to make a cross, another cross down here. This is actually taking the rivet head and hammering it a little bit to spread it this way and spread it this way. All of these are applicable and they all say different things. So I'm fond of having the way that you're attaching things, in this case rivets, actually forward the idea of the piece. That's why I tried to match the square motif with the square rivets. This is another example of taking them and sort of hammering them. So these have all been filed and then hammered a little bit and they have a different texture to them and a different, uh, the way that they're kind of collapsed. It's a little hard to see, but they're actually collapsed on the edges from the hammering. And here, this doesn't look like a rivet at all. It just looks like a little shaft of metal. So I could, this again would be a really good one for holding and or just decoration. So these are all possibilities. What I'm gonna show next is how to actually put these two pieces of uh, metal together with a piece of wire these are obviously very, very small. So instead of showing you just on a piece of metal like this, I actually made a model. And you can feel free to make fun of me. Uh, when I show this in class, people always kind of laugh. What I have here is this is going to be my wire, believe it or not. That's going to be my rivet wire. This is going to be my two pieces of metal. You can see it's two pieces of this foam core. And I'm going to have, I have a little bit different take on it. I actually measure how much is sticking out with, by using cards. I have two cards here that I've just sort of taped together. And that's actually how I'm going to measure to cut my rivet to the right length. So I actually have my cards here. I have the Jack and the Queen. Those cards work best. Don't use the Joker, it'll always fail. Um, anyway, uh, so what I've done now is I've cut a hole and Making a rivet can go awry in a couple of different ways. The first way is if the hole is too large for the rivet shaft. What happens is if you put the rivet through and I can just put it through with my fingers, the hole is a little bit too big. What I should do, it should just about fit through and then what I'm going to do normally, and you'll see it when I do my regular rivet, I will take a square nose plier and I'll just grasp that and I'll twist it around to force it through the two layers, three layers, five layers, whatever I'm going through. But it, and I twist it this way instead of rocking it because if I rock it, I can actually scar the metal around the hole. So I wanna push that through. Then what I'm going to do is, you know, uh, that's so the hole being too large is one way that the rivets go off. The next is how much you stick out. And again, I'm gonna use my two cards. So what I do is I actually put two cards on here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, that whole assembly here, I'm going to turn this upside down, put it on a metal block. You have to use a metal block to hammer a rivet down. You say, well, I have a really nice formica, it's really hard. It will go into the counter, no matter what you do. It has to be on some sort of steel block, a hammerhead, whatever it might be. So I put this on my steel block, I push this whole thing down. I know that because this is in that hole that I've cut in the cards, that I have two cards of metal sticking through this piece right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm gonna put my cards, the other set, over this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna clip that off. So I would bring my flush cutters down onto the cards and I would clip that off. Unfortunately, I couldn't make a giant uh, cutter, but you can get the idea, I think. So I would cut that right off. 
And what that means is when I cut that off, I'm going to have two cards of metal on this side of my, my uh, piece, and I still have the two cards maintained on the underside of this. So what I think I'll do is I will actually just take my knife here and sort of cut this off. And so again, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have these two cards worth of rivet sticking up. When I take my cards off, I have the two cards here. That's just the right amount. This is the right amount for if you're using 14 or 16 gauge wire. The rivets that you would buy here at um, Cool Tools are either 14 or 16 gauge. So I have my, my pieces in place. I have my rivet here. I'm working on a steel block. I leave the other cards underneath to maintain the two cards length of rivet on the other side. Then what I can do is I can take a really large hammer. This is a very large hammer. It's a beautiful hammer. And it's very, very large. What I'm going to do now, if I hammer straight down, this kind of tends to go out like that and form a very sharp edge. So what I do is instead of hitting in the center of this, I'm going to actually start hitting around the edge of this. And what you're going to see is this is going to start forming something that looks just a little bit like a mushroom cap. And it goes right around like that. And I've got my rivet in place. The moment that this gets a little bit bigger than the hole, it's riveted. So I don't have to make it go all the way around. I can actually make it go just in one direction. And on the other side, I'm going to show you how to do that. So that's a rivet. That's completely in place. It's never going to come apart. Those two pieces are in place for the top. Now what I'm going to do is take this, turn it over. I know that I already have the exact same amount of material on here. So when I force this down into a head, I'm guaranteed that it will match the head on the other side. Now, instead, however, of doing it by going around, I can also use something called a cross peen hammer. Peen means curved. So this is curved and it goes across the face of the hammer. And I can actually take this now and I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to start hammering out in one direction. And I get kind of an oval, half an oval over there. And I'm going to come back the other way and finish up that oval. Again, the moment that it has gone past the hole, it's riveted. So now I have, instead of a round um, head, I have an oval head. And this is completely riveted. This uh, method of riveting comes in really handy. If I had uh, the back of my piece and I had already soldered in place like a pin stem or something like that, and this was in the back, you could see that I couldn't get all the way around this because the pin stem is in the way. However, I can use my cross pin and go right next to it. So this is a method of getting into really tight little places using the cross pin. I'm also really fond of the fact that this says something different than this does. This has a certain reference that we know about. It's a circle and all of that, and it looks like a rivet. This has a different sort of set of references. And I'm really fond of using this uh, as a design element in my work. Think about taking this and if, say I was attaching a circle to a square. I could actually have uh, about four or five rivets going around it. And what if I took this rivet and made it this way and the next one was this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. My rivet heads would actually set up a pattern. So the smallest thing on the surface, which is going to be the rivet head, can actually be a very, very important design element. And I use that all the time in my work. You can see that I, as I was pointing it out, those rivets are very, very strategically uh, formed and placed. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do uh, with another setup, I'm going to actually show you how to do it at a small scale now that you've seen it at a large scale. And I'll get ready for that and show you that in the next segment. So what I have here is I just have a couple of pieces of copper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through one piece first. And this is kind of important, especially if you're having multiple holes in a piece. So I'm going to drill through this piece first. Let's say I have three or four rivets that I'm going to be putting in. I'm going to drill through each one. Uh, for drilling, a lot of times you can make a little dent in here and that's fine. However, I have found too that if I put the drill in here and I just kind of circle it around a little bit, it usually seats quite accurately and I will drill right through. 
Other times I might actually just make a little dent as you've seen in the past. Okay, so I have my drill. By the way, if you notice, I went very, very slowly. Uh, the faster you drill, usually the less you go through. Uh, the drill doesn't have a chance to bite into the metal. So I have my four holes here. When I go to put this piece on here, the rule is one hole, one rivet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a guide and I'm going to drill through my second piece. Now what I have to do, however, is I have to insert a wire or a rivet so that those two pieces are kind of locked together right now. If I don't do that, if I just hold it really tight and try to drill all four holes at the same time, they will, when you go to rivet, they will never line up, no matter what you do. Um, and uh, I have had that experience more than once. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill my second hole and I'm going to put in another rivet. Once I have two rivets in there, then I can go ahead and drill all of the rest of the holes. So if I had, you know, 17 holes to drill, I could do it because now it's going to be locked in place. Whoops, wrong hole. Okay, so that, those two pieces are really locked in place and they can't move because I have both of those rivets in there. So if I had rivets all over the place, I could go ahead and drill all of those holes and it will line up when I, ultimately when I drill it. Now, these are rivets that have pre-made heads already. And I'm going to show you how to do one of these, and then I'm going to show you how to use just any wire that you like to make a rivet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to use my cards. I don't have to measure the other side because it already has a head on it. But I'm going to put my cards on here. I'm going to bring my flush cutter all the way down. I'm going to cut that off. Even a flush cutter will usually leave, as my high school kids used to say, that pointy thingy in the middle. So what I'll do is usually just take, leave the cards here, and I will just file down to the cards. And that means that when I leave the cards in place, I'm not going to corrupt any of the surrounding area with the file. Then I'll take my uh, cards off, and I will take, for this one, like I showed you just a moment ago, I'll take a round-faced hammer, and a lot of times what I'll do is I will actually anchor my hand down here so that I can come down exactly on that rivet head. If I just hold my hand up here, I might have an errant hammer blow and mark my metal. But if I anchor my hand down and kind of go around in that circle, you probably can't see it, but I'm actually going around this way. But it's so small that I've just, just a little tiny bit of movement with my hand and I have my rivet head. And that's riveted per perfectly, and it's also riveted uh, permanently. So I would go ahead and I would cut off each one of these one at a time and do each rivet in place. Now, instead of using the pre-made one, I'll do the next one with this wire. I used this wire, and I knew that it was just about the right size. The hole is just a little big, interestingly. And I kind of did that on purpose. I knew it would be just ever so slightly bigger because if you have that situation, you can actually shrink the hole just a little bit. And the way that you shrink the hole, I know it sounds really weird, but what I can do is I can actually take and put my metal on the block here, and I can actually take the round-faced hammer, and I can come along, and right on top of that hole, I'm gonna hammer just a little tiny bit. And what that does is that forces a little bit of metal back into that hole, and I ostensibly shrink it. And there, it's just exactly the right size now. So what I'm going to do is, this is what I showed you with the large model. I'm going to take my wire. I'm going to take my flush cutter. Just cut off the tip. I will take my file, get rid of the pointy thingy. Make sure that that's perpendicular to the length of my wire. I'll run that through the hole again. Oops. There I go. Okay, I'm going to put my cards on here. Take the whole assembly, turn it upside down. Take my other set of cards right on top. I'll use the flush cutters, bring it down. 
keep the cards in place, file the pointy thingy off, use my round faced hammer, anchor my hand, turn this whole thing over. I don't need the um, cards anymore. I had already filed that pointy thingy off of this side. When I cut it, I will use my anchored hand, go right around the outside, and I've got my rivet formed. The nice thing about using a wire rivet and making your own is that this is like a bronze wire that they sell here at Cool Tools, and when I get my finished piece, the, there'll be a nice contrast between the head of the rivet and the color of the head of the rivet and the background. I can do that or sometimes I use exactly the same kind of material. It, it's up to you, but doing it with a wire really allows me a lot of latitude with what kind of material is going to be showing as the fastening uh, rivet. So that's riveting um, and you can go on from there and just use it through for virtually any material that you're putting together. Thanks for joining me for the demo about riveting, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.